Hey guys, with everyone staying at home because of the pandemic, baseball cards are more popular than ever before. One of the most popular baseball card designs of all time is the 1987 Tops featuring wood paneling. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to design your own 1987 Tops baseball card. We're going to start off by opening up our reference image in Photoshop. I chose the Barry Bonds card because I read that it's the most valuable card in this pack. We're going to press Z and zoom in on the image. And now we're going to start blocking out the main shapes and design elements in this card. I like to use a color that's drastically different from the original reference image so I can see how accurate my design is and if I need to make any changes it's not hard to see it. I'm going to fix my line shape by pressing A to directly select specific vertices and moving them around. The inner shape is going to be the clipping mask for the image, so you need to fill it with some sort of color. It doesn't matter what it is. And then go to File, Place, Place Your Image. And then scale that image up so it takes up the whole clipping mask. Adjust it as needed. And then change the outline to the black color. I noticed the outer line looks a little off, so I'm going to zoom in and direct select the vertices by pressing A and then clicking on that vertice and moving it around just to, to get that fixed so it looks right. Something still looks a little off, so I'm going to add a stroke to the clipping mask to see what's wrong. I'm going to make it two pixels wide because that's what it looks like in the design. When I zoom in, you should be able to see exactly two pixels in between the two black lines. So adjust that as needed. And now we're going to create the shape with the logo in it. If you want it to be exactly like the original, you can drag out some guidelines, put it on the left and the top of the circle, and then drag out your circle from that intersection. Make that a stroke of one. It's a slightly smaller stroke. Now we're going to place the logo, and we're going to scale it down just about at the edges of the square. They're going to be slightly cropped out. And zoom out, that looks about right. As you'll notice, all our images and logos that we're placing are smart objects. So if we scale this whole document up, we won't lose quality unless we go above the original size of that logo or image. Now 
Now we're going to make this rectangle down here. It's really simple. And if we directly select the yellow from the original card, we'll get that exact color. Now we're going to go to our Assets folder and install the font. Now it's time to add text in here. Now select that font, Dom Casual, in the drop-down. And we're going to select the same color as the font in the original card. I thought all these colors were black, but when you look at it closely, they're really just a dark brown. Scale the font up as much as possible. As you can see, this looks a little bit different than the original image, so I'm trying to get it perfect above and below the text. This font looks pretty accurate to the original, but it looks like they stretched it out. That's something I usually don't recommend, but in this case, that's what it looks like the designer did. Now we're going to fix the kerning, which is the amount of space in between each letter. If you put the cursor in between two letters and hold Alt and use the left and right keys, it will adjust the kerning in between just those two specific letters. But if you select all the text and hold Alt and left or right, it'll adjust the kerning between every letter. We're going to try to get it as accurate as possible to the original image. Looks like we need to stretch it out a little bit more. Zoom out and it looks pretty good. Now I'm going to drop in that wood texture and scale it up so that the texture looks about the same as the original. You can tell if it's close to the original by looking at the lines in the wood if they're as thick or as thin as the original. But our color looks a little bit off. That's fine. You don't need it to be the exact same color as the original. But in our case, I'm going to do it just for fun. So I'm going to add a color balance adjustment layer. The wood in the original image looks a lot more yellow, maybe some green and red. So we're going to play with those sliders until it looks pretty accurate. Once you get more experience, you can kind of tell, but, but as you're learning to be a graphic designer and photo editor, a lot of it is a guessing game. I'm also going to turn down the saturation a little bit because those cards back in the 80s were a little bit less saturated and it looks close enough to me. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the image. As you can see in the original image, the photo that was used in the original card has a lot more yellow hue to it and is a little bit grainy and has less contrast to it. So I'm just going to mess around and do it to my own liking. I'm not going to go as intense as the original image, but I'm going to try to make it look a little bit more aged like it was from the 80s. Now that I look at it, the colors that I used on the border the black and the white are, are probably too pure black and white, whereas the card looks like it's more of a dark brown and maybe a stained white. So I'm just going to take the brown from the outline of the text box that I used for Barry Bonds and make that the same color for the outlines, as well as a slightly yellowy tinted white. Now we're pretty much done. As a designer, I like to keep my layer files clean and organized, just in case I need to go back and edit it, or if I'm going to hand it off to somebody else, then someone else who's looking at it for the first time can understand how to use the document. So I'm going to group everything and, and name after the player. And I'm going to rename some of the layers to something that makes a little bit more sense than just rectangle or circle. I'll group the photo with the effects in it and name that photo. And this looks pretty good. So if you collapse all the layers, 
you just show or hide that layer and it'll show what you've done versus the original. And if you wanted to use this template for other players on other teams, you could just duplicate that layer and change the name and have everything all in one spot. As I look at this, there's one more thing I wanted to adjust just a little bit. In the original image, you can see more detail in the background, whereas the image I chose is way more exposed. So I'm going to play with the shadows and highlights and just bump the shadows up a lot more so you can see more detail. And I'm going to reduce the saturation a little bit more and play with the coloring again. If you wanted to, you could add some noise to the image to make it a little bit older, but I don't want to mess with that. I like it how it is. So now I'm going to save it. I created this just for fun, but if you wanted to make this and actually print it off, you would want to start this document in CMYK color format and 300 resolution. Right now, if you printed it off, it would look a little bit pixelated because this was made for digital. If you want to see me design other iconic sports cards, let me know in the comments below.